this time I have something else I want to share with you now. I want to share with you a second or third half of the scripture. It comes from Luke's account of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it's Luke chapter 12, verses 8 through 10. And just stay seated. You don't have to stand for this reading. But Jesus is speaking here. He's talking to his disciples. And to those who will listen to him, he says this. I tell you the truth. Everyone who acknowledges me publicly here on earth, the Son of Man, will also acknowledge in the presence of God's angels. But anyone who denies me here on earth will be denied before God's angels. And anyone who speaks against the Son of Man can be forgiven. But anyone who blasphemes the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. Let's pray. Gracious, loving Heavenly Father, as we come now this moment of devotion, I ask you now to please just anoint us with your spirit. Open our hearts and our minds to you so that my church family won't hear my words, but they'll hear your words now. And the greater than that, they will not see me, but instead they will see you. And I ask this now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, when people read those words from Jesus about denying Him, and then denying God, and then they read that part, the teaching about the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, which I want to tell you right now, it is not about taking the Holy Spirit's name in vain. No, it is also the same thing. It is about denying. Denying not just Jesus, not just God, but also denying the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. And a lot of people, when they think or own this passage here, this commandment by Jesus, and then they read or they think or they hear a song like He's Alive, when they're talking about how Peter denied Jesus what he did that night. There are a lot of people who have come to believe that Peter actually committed that unpardonable sin and that he should not have been forgiven. Believe it or not, there are people out there that believe that. I talked to them. But what you and I, my friends, this morning, we need to understand is that before any of us, for any of them, for any of us, before we condemn Peter for what he did that night, we need to come to the realization of one very important truth. And that truth is this, that just like Peter, we have all committed the unpardonable sin in one way or another. We are all guilty of having denied God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit at least one time in our lives. Now, I know what you're thinking. I know what can be going through your mind. I'd be thinking the same thing that you're thinking. If I was up there with you and another preacher was standing here, you're thinking to yourself, but Brother Sam, I have never denied knowing God. I have never denied knowing Jesus. And I have never denied knowing the Holy Spirit. And I'm 99.9% sure that I have never taken His name in vain. And you know what? You're right. I believe you. I know you've never taken any of their names in vain, but the thing is this. There are a lot of ways, a lot of ways that you and I can deny. Deny knowing Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit in our lives. First off, when we commit an intentional sin. Now there's Different ways to sin. There is unintentional. There is accidental sin. We all do that, don't we? That the devil catches us off guard, the temptation hits us, and before we know it, we've done that sin, but then we ask for forgiveness. But then there are sins that you and I do deliberately. Sins that we call intentional sins. And when you go forth doing that sin, knowing that you're doing something that God and that Jesus and the Holy Spirit do not want you to do, friends. When you go and do that kind of sin, in the back of your mind, you're thinking, 
Well, I'll get forgiveness later once I'm justified what I'm doing. Then I'll get forgiveness for Friends, when you've done that, you have denied knowing God. When you refuse, friends, when you refuse to love someone the way that God loves you, you deny knowing God. When someone comes to you and asks for forgiveness, when they come and say, I'm sorry for what I did for you, or did to you, and you come and you ask for that forgiveness sincerely, but then they tell you, I'll have to think about it. Or I will never forgive you. And that person has denied knowing Jesus. When the Holy Spirit lays upon your heart to go and help someone who's hurting, someone who's lost, or a fellow Christian who is struggling, trying to overcome their past, trying to get beyond all that and live a changed life for Jesus. When we are told to go and show grace and mercy to those that need our help and fellow Christians who are struggling with the exact same struggles we deal with in our own lives. But when we say we can't or worse, when we say I won't do it, then you're denying the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. When God calls for the church, calls for the church to send out workers. Workers to go out and work in the fields to bring in the lost and the hurting. But we immediately want to respond with, well, I've done my part. I've done my work. I've done my job. It's time for somebody else to do it. We say, I've done my work. But in our hearts, we already know that God is the only one who can tell you when your work on earth is done. But when you say, I've done my work, you are denying God. And when we stand in judgment, we stand in judgment of someone because we only choose to listen to one side of what is being said. Or we instantly want to make up our minds and judge somebody without knowing the whole truth. Without talking to that person. But we want to stand in judgment. And you're denying knowing Jesus. See, there's a lot of ways to deny knowing Jesus, to deny knowing God, to deny knowing the Holy Spirit, but I'm not here to bring you down. Instead, I want to bring you up. Because this morning, we are blessed. We are blessed with two beautiful symbols, that cross and this service of communion. We are blessed this morning with that cross and with this service of communion, because first of all, that cross and this service of Holy Communion, the Lord's table is a beautiful reminder of the love and the grace and the mercy, the forgiveness that God brought into this world through the work of His Son. We're reminded of that forgiveness and the fact that just as Peter denied Jesus that night, Jesus will also forgive us when we deny Him. But it doesn't end there. There's even greater ease, friends. It's the fact that because of the cross and what we remember in this Lord's Supper, the Holy Communion here at His table, and we add it to Him that empty tomb, we are reminded then that not only did Jesus forgive, he also restored him. He restored him into a fellowship. He did not say, Peter, I forgive you, but I'm done with you. Go away. Instead, what he says, Peter, I forgive you, and I receive you back to me. Because that's what the empty tomb is also about. It's what the cross and communion are reminders of, that he not only forgives us, even when we deny him, 
begin responds into a relationship with him. But you want to know that's not even all of it. The greatest thing of all is that no matter how many times we deny Jesus, when you come to him and ask for forgiveness, when you fall to your knees and look up into those eyes of love, when you look into the face of God, and you tell him, I'm sorry. Jesus, I'm sorry for all the times I have denied you. He will not deny you. Instead, he will raise you. And he will give you new life. New life now and new life everlasting. We can deny Jesus. But when you come to him, he will not deny you. And that's what this is about. It is hard news. But there's also good news. Because this is how much God loves us. That he gave his only begotten son. And whoever believes in him will not perish. But will have new and everlasting life. Amen. we come together now to remember and to celebrate what it is that God has done for us through Jesus. I invite you, if you will, to join me. It's on page 12 in the front of your hymnal. It will be on the screen behind me. And we'll start with the words of invitation. As you know, I never take these words for granted. I'm not wearing my robe, but I am wearing my collar today. Just that my robe is, it's a symbol, a reminder that I have been blessed. That I'm the blessed one this morning to get to stand here and represent Jesus. And so, as I open this up, remember it's not me, it's Jesus. It is Jesus that invites you. And so hear these words now. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who learn to say repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, I invite you to hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. And now with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing. Always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he 
took bread. And he took the bread and he gave thanks to God. He then broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, Take, eat. This is my body broken for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this every time you eat it in remembrance of me. And after supper, he then took the cup and again he gave thanks to God. He then gave it to his disciples and he said, Take, drink. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for me for the forgiveness of sins. Do this every time you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on the gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ. One with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. I invite those who will be assisting Jim and Beth Ellen, and Brother James and Donna, I invite you to come in here and join me at this time. In a moment, you'll be invited to come. The ushers will direct you. We start at the back of our church, and you'll be invited to come down the center aisle to come to the altar and fill up the altar to kneel or stand. As you can see for this morning, we are doing the more traditional, where we take the bread and then we have the small cups. And so you'll be given the bread. It represents the body of Christ. Then you'll receive the small cup with the grape juice that represents the blood of Christ. And as you receive that, these beautiful symbols of his body and his blood given for you and for me, you receive these. And as you kneel or stand there, receive these gifts. And then as you are served, and then I will dismiss you. I will dismiss you, and then you can get up and return back to your seat by the outside aisle, and then the ushers will bring the next move up. And we'll continue through the center and returning back on the outside until everyone has had a chance to be served. If you're unable to come, just let one of the ushers know, and we'll be glad to bring the bread and the juice to you. As always, it is an honor to be able to let you know that this is not my table. It's not Marcia's table. It's not this church's table. It's not a United Methodist table. This is Jesus' table. 
You see, Jesus, he's in the business of never turning anyone away. He will never turn anyone away. And so that's why you are welcome to come, all of you, whether you're a member of this church or not. It doesn't matter if you're a United Methodist or not. Because Jesus welcomes us all. And so in our church, at this church here, we welcome everyone to come and receive this symbol of the body and the blood of Christ. And so you're all invited to come. But on this morning, as you think about the scriptures that have been shared, the song that was given, and the devotion that God laid upon my heart two weeks ago, Two weeks ago, God gave that to me, and I wrote it down to share it this morning. I want you to come to the altar and receive that bread and juice, and then I ask you to pray. And ask God to forgive you where you have denied Him. When you refuse to love or refuse to forgive. When you refuse to be obedient, when you've stood in judgment. Ask God to forgive you. Of all the times you have denied him. And then thank him. Look into his eyes at this altar and then thank him for not just forgiving you, but restoring you into a fellowship with him. To bring about the complete promise of both the cross and the empty tomb symbolized by this table today. So the call is given, the invitation is shared. Now it's up to us. So I invite you to will to come forward and join us and the ushers will arrange you at this time. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No way comes to the Father except by me. And that way is a way of forgiveness, of love and grace and mercy. It is a way of being restored in the fellowship of God. And all we ask is that we do the same thing for one another. To love and forgive and give grace and mercy to one another as He has done it for us. So receive that forgiveness. Be restored. And go now and live for Him. Arise and go forth in peace.
whosoever believes in him, well, you know the rest. He did it for you. He did it for me. And all we have to do is turn to him and trust in him and receive his blessing of life and also to be restored into fellowship with him and with God. And so I invite you to receive this blessing and go forward to live a life, not just of forgiveness, but of restoration. To be restored in fellowship and live that life so others will know that you have been both forgiven and restored. And share it with everyone that you need. Arise and go forth in peace. yesterday, today, and forever, as the preacher tells us in Hebrews 13, that means that the power of the blood of the cross of Jesus is just as powerful today as it was 2,000 years ago. The power of forgiveness, the power of being restored in fellowship, being one with him. And all he has is that you live it out each day. To love one another, he has loved us. Live that out now in your life. Arise and go forth in peace.
Hill for clothing is number 357, just as I am. And as always, the altar is still open, it never closes, because Jesus never stops coming. So the altar is still open if you feel led to come back. The church doors are open. If God is speaking to you about coming and joining our church in fellowship. But I want to close just a little different this morning. I want us to do verses 1, 3, and 5 of this great hymn. It's not long. It's just as I am. I know there's 136 verses. I'm all asking for food. But I don't want you to sing it. I'm going to ask Beth Ellen to play. And I want you to read the words to this hymn. The message that it has for you and me today. A message of love. A message of forgiveness. And a message of being restored. So would you please just stay seated. Jill, you can just take a seat up there if you want to, or you can stand there. And Beth Ellen, would you just play? And Earl, would you please so just show verses 1, 3, and 5 for us at this time? Let this be a time of closing prayer. one back up. And let's all stand together and let's sing now verse one in the chorus.
and I need a personal favor. All those on staff parish, I need you to come today. I need you to do whatever you need to do. I, I need you to come today at 3 o'clock for a very important meeting. Arise, go forth in peace, and all of God's people together said, Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Amen.